So two of the most common prescription dry eye treatments is that of Zydra and Restasis. So in this video, we're going to break down what the science says about Zydra versus Restasis so that you know how they work, potential side effects, and why your doctor may prefer one versus the other. Plus, I'll be sharing some of my own thoughts and tips about how to use them. That's today's video. Let's take a look. Hey, what's up? Dr. Joseph Allen here from the Dr. Eye Health Show, and I'm excited today to talk to you about Zydra versus Restasis and how these medications work as a dry eye treatment. Now, first off, I do want to start off by saying that this video is not in any way, shape, or form sponsored by any pharmaceutical company. Uh, I think that would be unethical. This video is purely just educational content so that you know about these medications, how they work, and how they can help you with dry eye. However, this video does have a sponsor, and that's from Tier Restore, who happens to make what I think is one of the best warm compress masks for dry eye, and they happen to make one of my favorite eyelid wipes. So shout out to Tier Restore for supporting the channel and making this video possible. Now let's start off talking about Zydra. Zydra is an eye drop prescription medication that is usually prescribed twice a day, once in the morning, and then once at night. The active ingredient for Zydra is something called Lefitigrast, and it's prepared as a 5% ophthalmic solution in a preservative-free vial. Now, how does Zydra work? Well, unfortunately, we don't fully understand exactly how Zydra works, but we do know that Lefitigrast, the active ingredient, kind of works as a small molecule that blocks the binding of inflammatory cells onto different parts of the eye, including the conjunctiva, which is a clear outer coating membrane on the white part of the eye, as well as the lacrimal gland, which produces your tears. And essentially the blocking of these inflammatory cells kind of shuts down the entire inflammatory cascade, which plays a major role in dry eye syndrome. Now, Zydra as a medication did go through four multi-center, placebo-controlled, randomized, double-masked FDA clinical trials, including over a thousand people. And these studies did reveal that the groups using Zydra did have statistically significant improvements in both corneal signs, meaning corneal staining or ocular surface damage, as well as reduced symptoms, so kind of the eye dryness feelings versus people who are taking a placebo, which is honestly pretty huge that in these studies, they weren't able to just show that, hey, people's symptoms reduced, but from a doctor's perspective, the surface of the eye improved as well. And in a specific study called the Opus 3 study, where they looked at dry eye symptoms in groups being treated with both Zydra versus placebo, and these groups had like over 350 different patients in there, they found a statistically significant improvement in patient symptoms after just as early as 14 days at 42 days, and again at 84 days. So this was not just good early on, but even long-lasting improvements. Now, outside of how awesome that sounds, let's talk about Zydra side effects. Side effects from Zydra are only reported up to about 25% of people going through these studies, but they include namely any sort of sight irritation, like when you first put it in, your eyes may kind of not feel very well, they might be kind of irritated. Reduced visual acuity, and I've only heard some people report this, uh, but uh, usually it's reported only in the first 30 minutes after putting it in. Kind of like where your vision will go a little fuzzy or kind of fluctuate for a little bit. And then finally, an unusual taste or sensation in the back of your throat. And that side effect only occurs because the medication can drain down your tear duct into your nasal cavity and then back to your throat. And less than 5% of people in these studies ever reported any conjunctival hyperemia or redness, uh, allergies, discharge, or sinusitis. Now, as personally, I've been prescribing Zydra since basically it first came out. I find that patients do respond really well to it. It's been very rare that I've had to take a patient off of it because either they find it didn't help at all or uh, perhaps a side effect of some kind, like they really didn't like it. And most of the time when someone does have a side effect, it's usually the taste. And honestly, it's pretty easy to kind of overcome. Uh, two kind of tips for you is that you can either block your tear duct after you put it in just for about 30 seconds. That way it prevents it from getting through the drainage canals. And another idea is that since you should be using this medication twice a day, uh, it's best to brush your teeth at the same time so that 
can put the drops in and brush your teeth and whatever type of toothpaste you're using should mask any of the flavor of the medication in the back of your throat. Now again, remember that Zydra and then the next medication we're going to talk about, Restasis, they're both really designed to help control or manage that inflammatory role that occurs on the eye with dryness. But remember that inflammation is really occurring secondary to something else that's occurring on the eye, namely some loss of homeostasis in the tear film. And it has been found that up to 86% of people with dry eye have some level of oil gland deficiency, something related to what's called MGD or meibomian gland dysfunction. And this can result in problems with evaporation of the tear film. And that's exactly why eye doctors will recommend doing some form of warm compress on a regular basis to help manage this oil gland issue. And I mentioned that because I want you to think about that while I talk about today's sponsor here. Now, if you're somebody who's doing warm compresses on a daily basis like I am, then you know how frustrating it can be to set aside 10, 15 minutes of your day just to sit there with your eyes closed. But that's exactly why T Restore went out to design a mask that you could keep your eyes open that allows you to stay productive, focus on emails, do things around the apartment or your house. And it does this still while providing appropriate heat for the right amount of time to the eyelids. And it has the extra benefits of not needing a microwave. It's not putting direct pressure onto the eyeball itself, which in case you don't know that direct pressure on the eyelids from other warm compress masks is the reason why your vision is often fuzzy after doing it for a few minutes. And the other thing I like is that because the eyelids are open, you're allowed to blink. That means that the melted oils are actually pumping and coming out of those glands. So if you haven't checked out the T Restore mask for warm compresses yet, Again, something I really love and I think it's a great product. Also, the same company makes a great eyelid wipe called the Hyla Wipe. Again, if you want to check out any of these things, I'll put information in the description below. All right, so now let's break down Restasis. Now, if you haven't heard of Restasis before, it's been out for a long time, actually since about 2003. And its active ingredient is that of something called Cyclosporin A, and specifically at a 0.05% is where it was first approved for. And just some fun facts, Cyclosporin A was originally derived from a mushroom from the Netherlands, and then it really became big time in the medicine world because it was used used and very effective for organ transplants. And specifically when it comes to dry eye is a medication that's similar to Zydra in that it's only used twice a day. One drop in the morning, one drop at night. All right, so how does Restasis work? Well, Restasis, very similar to Zydra, will work by suppressing inflammation. The inflammation of T cells that you will find in your tear film, the cornea, and even in the lacrimal gland. And then with Restasis versus Zydra, they did show in their studies to improve tear production after 12 months. Specifically, Restasis or cyclosporin will bind to a protein called cyclofin, which will prevent the proliferation of cytotoxic T cells and prevent the recruitment of helper T cells. And what's important to know is that cyclosporin will help stop the activation of inflammatory T cells, but doesn't necessarily stop the already activated T cells. And what I mean by that is that the inflammatory cells that are already bound and activated aren't just gonna release and drift away because they're using Restasis. Over time, those have to go on their own, but then Restasis blocks the future binding of more inflammatory cells. And this is important because of when you can expect to have a benefit while using this medication. Because for those already active T cells to release and drift away, it takes roughly three to six months. And that's exactly why a lot of people may not notice any benefit with Restasis right away. In fact, they're gonna have to use it for at least three months to before they really start having a clinical benefit. Now, one really good thing about Restasis is that it has been out for a long time. And being that it's been out for longer, there's been a lot more research on it, being it not just used for dry eye, but rejection of corneal transplants, pterygium surgeries, a lot of things. But one thing specific for dry eye is that there have been studies showing that patients using Restasis can have an increased number of goblet cells after four to 12 months. And goblet cells on the surface of the eye, they produce more mucus, which is significantly important if you have dry eye. If those goblet cells are damaged or non-existent, then you're not gonna produce much of the mucus to even hold liquid to the eye to begin with. So some doctors may think, hey, my patient's goblet cells may be damaged, let's get them on Restasis. Now, as far as Restasis side effects go, one of the issues with the cyclosporin in general is that that molecule is not very stable in an eye drop form. 
And because of this, it's required to be suspended in an emulsifier agent, such as castor oil or glycerin, which can cause other side effects, such as burning, stinging, and hyperemia, which is just another name for redness of the eye. In reported studies, the most common side effect with restasis is that of ocular burning of around 17% of people, and then less than 5% of people taking it report any other sort of symptoms. Now, since restasis has been out for some time, it did recently become generic. And back in 2018, another medication using the same active ingredient, cyclosporin A, came out. And that new medication is called Sequa. Sequa is cyclosporin A, but at a higher concentration, where restasis was 0.05% cyclosporin A, Sequa is almost double that. It's 0.09% cyclosporin. But with Sequa, they also combined a type of micellular technology, which helps stabilize and get that medication into the eye tissues faster. And I'll just report to you anecdotally that I personally see patients put on Sequa respond better somewhere closer to four to six weeks after initiating it. Otherwise, right now, it's just this tough battle between brand name Restasis and a lot of patients now being forced to go on generic Restasis. And we're getting a lot of calls because a lot of patients are saying that the generic form of Restasis doesn't seem to work as well as the original form. But again, that's very anecdotal. And I encourage you, let me know in the comment section if you've used either Zydra or Restasis, your personal uh, kind of experiences with it. If you were put on a generic, was it work as well as the original form? Uh, let us know. But of course, and as always, please consult with your local eye care provider, a dry eye specialist, hopefully who can help you out in recommending which medication may be best for you. If you did enjoy this video, it helped you out, hit that like button for us and subscribe to the channel if you wanna learn more about dry eye education. And if you haven't seen our video walking through what a dry eye evaluation at our clinic looks like, or you need some help finding a dry eye specialist in your area, then click over here to the side to check out our full series all about dry eye. Otherwise, hey, thanks for joining us for this video. I sure hope it helped you. Otherwise, keep an eye on it, and we'll see you soon.